uh, Shinny, we have stuff on the coffee table. I don't want you on the coffee table. Yeah, and I know you were flipping your tail telling me no, that I want to get on. No, because it, you could on the floor or you could come over here, Shinny. You can go over there. Yes. You can walk over. You can jump over me. You know how to jump over me. You're careful. You, you know how to do that. But I don't want you on it because we have some stuff on it. We're going to be eating, okay? So, Samantha, when people have pets and they don't want their cat to go on the coffee table, what do they do? How do they tell their cat, no coffee table, stay here? Okay, now, this is really good because if you notice, I use the word, I don't want you on the coffee table. And the reason I do that is for me. I was losing my ability to communicate with adult people. <laughs> and so I constantly use my words because it was scary when I couldn't talk to a group of people at a cocktail party. It was spooky. So in order to communicate with her about the coffee table, I'll point to the coffee table and I see it and then I see her on the couch and I let her know, I may raise my voice, but it's a crystal clear vision of look at the coffee table, lay on the couch. Look at the coffee table, walk on the floor. That's what's going on in my mind. I'm visualizing that is what the, and my words have to correlate with where I'm at. Now, if I was new at this, then I would make sure that I say, uh, Shinny, look at the coffee table and walk away. Just look at the cup and make sure my back thought doesn't negate what I want her to do. Because the thought of fear of her getting on the coffee table with the average person is more powerful than what you really want to have happen. So if I tell Shingara, don't get on the coffee table, and I visualize her getting on the coffee table, yep. she gets the message that she wants to be on, because I gave her yeah. the picture in my mind of her on the coffee table. And she already wants to get on the coffee, so you're supporting what she, what she wants you to do. So I have to visualize her where I want her, on the couch or on the floor. Yes, the alternative behavior, alternative action you want her to do. What's sad is we say no, and then we get angry, but we don't give the animal an alternative. And, we, and we're and we not checking, what are we saying? Now you used an interesting word, a visualize. Now visualizing is very, very powerful, but in our mind is all the visions that are there. They're stored away. So what you wanna do is pretend she's already doing it. It's more powerful, it's relaxed to the mind you won't feel like, oh my God, I'm not seeing it in my, my head. I've got to see her, the vision of her, and I can't see it. But if you pretend she's doing it, feel how relaxed you feel. So it's totally different. So instead of saying, instead of giving her a negative command, yeah. no coffee table, I change my thoughts and the way I yes. visualize and give her a positive image. And instead of no coffee table, I immediately think, hey, stay on the couch. Or yeah. why don't you get on the floor, which is a good spot. Yeah, or give her a job. Like, uh, I give many cats, and a lot of my cat guys have, over the years especially, patrol the baseboards. I need you to patrol the baseboards and make sure no bugs come in. That's their job. Now, when you tell Shingara that, though, it's different from when I tell her. You're visualizing her patrolling yes. the baseboards. Yes, I automatically see it. They mm. are simultaneously now because I've been doing this for 35 years. Okay, so for the person at home, keep practicing yes. visualizing my cat, not on the coffee table, but on where I want her. Yes. The minute I see her in my head, oh my gosh, I hope you don't go on the coffee table, and I see her on the coffee, she's gonna go on the coffee table. Right, or don't let's see take it. one don't see where it. Okay, okay. everybody's driving home. Okay, and they're, they have a dog at the house, and that dog chews up stuff. And what you're there thinking is, oh, I hope and pray my dog hasn't chewed up those pillows. Man, I don't know what I'm going to do if they chew up those pillows. And sure enough, you get in the door, and the dog automatically squats down because it knows it's going to get in trouble, but you just told it to chew up the pillows. 
confusing for the animal. Super confusing for the animal. So let's say you want that dog not to chew up. What's sad is so many dogs are home for eight hours a day. They may have the pet door to go out and poop and pee, but they're bored. And so if you provide a big chewy or create some alternative things that they can chew on, a dog bone, stuff it with meatloaf, freeze them, and then give the animal a vision. I love it when you patrol the yard and then patrol the baseboards, lay and listen. Um, think of all the activities that they can do while they're home and then when, and that they've not just, that they've not touched the pillows. Okay? Thanks.